Hello and welcome to our online Pentecost service from the Mission Community of Biddeford, Langcross, Littleham, Monkley and Weir Gifford. It's lovely to have you here with us today. We'll begin with a call to worship and uh, then sing together our first song, which will be Breathe On Me, Breath Of God. So let us still our hearts. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord. And we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on a cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And now, with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. As we wait in silence, fill us with your spirit. As we listen to your word, Fill us with your spirit as we worship you in majesty. Fill us with your spirit as we long for your renewing. Fill us with your spirit as we long for your equipping. Fill us with your spirit.
Spirit of God, your fire of truth burns brightly and casts righteous light on our sins and the sins of the world. May your perfect light reveal to us our selfishness and lack of love. May your refining fire expose our fears and lack of faith. In humility, almighty God, we confess our sins and ask for your forgiveness. And we pray that you would prepare us to receive your Holy Spirit into our hearts and souls. Amen. May God Almighty forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of his Spirit all our days. Amen. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is taken from John, chapter 15, verses 26 and 27, and chapter 16, verses 4b to 15. Jesus said, The Helper will come, the Spirit, who reveals the truth about God and who comes from the Father. 
I will send him to you from the Father and he will speak about me. And you too will speak about me because you have been with me from the very beginning. I did not tell you these things at the beginning for I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me where I am going. And now that I have told you Your hearts are full of sadness, but I'm telling you the truth. It is better for you that I go away, because if I do not go, the Helper will not come to you. But if I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove to the people of the world that they are wrong about sin and about what is right and about God's judgment. They are wrong about sin because they do not believe in me. They are wrong about what is right because I'm going to the Father and you will not see me any more. And they are wrong about judgment because the ruler of this world has already been judged. I have much more to tell you But now it would be too much for you to bear. When, however, the Spirit comes, who reveals the truth about God, he will lead you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but he will speak of what he hears and will tell you of things to come. He will give me glory because he will take what I say and tell it to you. All that my Father has is mine. That is why I said that the Spirit will take what I give him and tell it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I'd like to start with a quote from a book that will be familiar to a lot of you, I'm sure. Aslan is a lion, the lion, the great lion, said Mr. Beaver. Oh, said Susan, I thought he was a man. Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. That, of course, is from C.S. Lewis, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Aslan the Lion is a fictional representation of Jesus, but the description, he isn't safe, but he's good, for me, perfectly describe another member of the Holy Trinity. So during this talk, I'm going to adopt these words to describe the Holy Spirit. Let's return to our Bible reading today from Acts. Luke's description of the scene is vivid. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Let's try to imagine being there and experiencing this. Picture it, a powerful wind coming from heaven and filling the whole house, seeing what looked like tongues of fire coming to rest on everyone there. This is such an incredible picture and to me it matches the description Mr Beaver gave of Aslan. Safe? He isn't safe, but he is good. After all, fire is often good, but it is rarely safe. Safe. It's a comforting word, isn't it? Protected, absent from danger or risk. But is safe always good? And is good always safe? Sometimes, particularly when it comes to our faith, I would like to suggest Staying in the safety of our comfort zone is not good. Safe is often something we seek, but is it what God wants for us? Can he use us effectively if we're comfortable? What else springs to mind when you think of the Holy Spirit as not being safe, but being good? Maybe that quiet prompting we get when we feel God may be speaking to us, asking us to do something, something when we think about it in the moment, we may not really want to do. Like speaking to someone about our faith, or maybe the opposite, not saying something in the moment. Or like feeling the prompting to become a priest in the Church of England. How do we respond to these promptings of the Spirit? Is it with trepidation, saying to ourselves, I really, really, really don't want to do that? Probably. I think we can all relate to that. We can choose to ignore it, to rationalise it, to pretend it isn't God. But the people I know who have done that have always regretted it. But what happens when we step out in faith? and follow the Spirit's leading. Remember, he may not be safe, but he is good. We may feel vulnerable in the moment, pleading with God to not make us step out of our comfort zones. But what about the person God is trying to reach through you? If we are obedient, we may be surprised by the outcome. I remember several years ago sitting in church on a lovely summer Sunday evening, half listening to the talk, but I'm sure I have everyone's attention here, and half daydreaming, when I felt God speak to me. He said, 
I want you to ring your friend and tell her that I love her. I have to admit, I was somewhat stunned, but I said, Lord, if that is you, say that again. And to my surprise, frustration, and I have to be honest, dread, he did. Now, my friend and I had had a talk about God some time before this, and it didn't go particularly well. So the last thing I wanted to do was call her and say this to her. Nevertheless, I resolved to do what I was being asked. So I called her the next morning and I said, I was in church yesterday and God told me to call you and to tell you he loves you. And then I waited for the explosion or the anger or the resentment, but all that came back was a brief silence and then a calm question. How did you know it was God? And I said, the only two ways I can explain it are A, I wouldn't presume to call you and to say such a thing if it wasn't true. And B, that I heard this voice in my heart and my head at the same time. You see, God was moving by his spirit in that situation and interacting with me. And I'm by no means unique in this. God speaks to all of us through his spirit at all sorts of times. But are we listening? And if we are listening, are we too nervous of the Holy Spirit to be moved out of our comfort zones? A time I was moved out of my comfort zone was when I was supporting a friend as she explored army chaplaincy. And she invited me to go with her on an, in, on an insight day to visit a serving army chaplain at a barracks. For part of the day, we were invited to observe a welfare meeting. Whilst I sat there quietly watching and listening, two things happened. The first was I was struck by the love the officers and senior ranks had for their men. Some of the men had made some mistakes, but the support was there for them. That's when the second thing happened. I felt the Holy Spirit move and God said to me, this is what I want you to do, but not yet. So firstly, God called me hugely out of my comfort zone. You want me to become a priest? Me? And secondly, I was being told I had to wait. Now, Rachel, my wife, will tell you that patience isn't one of my strongest suits. That happened in 2010, and it took eight years of praying and asking, is now the time, Lord, before God said yes and I started theological college. Is he safe? No. But is he good? Definitely. Have I had his leading, guiding and support all this time? Definitely. I wonder what God would like to say to each of us today if we step out of our comfort zones and listen for that still small voice. Let's take a minute or two now in silence to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. For some of us, this will be normal. For some, a renewal. And for some, the first time. But let's just be peaceful. Let me pray. Come. Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, kindle in us the fire of your love. As you send forth your spirit, we are recreated and you renew the face of the earth. Amen.
can I encourage you to share with someone today, whether a friend in church or someone else you trust, what you felt God might have been saying to you during that time of silence? So let me finish. I will close with Romans 15 verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. Before he left his disciples, Jesus prepared them for his ascension and the coming of the Holy Spirit. He told them to wait. Acts 1 recalls his words. When the Holy Spirit comes, you will be filled with power and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, three of the most difficult places. You are to witness to the ends of the earth. Now you need to wait. Today we celebrate that coming of the Spirit. He came with incredible force. They heard the huge wind, they saw tongues of fire that reached out to each of them, and they burst into foreign languages for all to hear. We pray for ourselves and for your whole church that we might be open to the empowering presence of your Spirit, the gracious gifting of your Spirit, the adventurous leading of your Spirit. Pour your Spirit upon your church here in Biddeford and in our villages as we make contact with families and friends, neighbours and acquaintances in Christ's name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us for the sick, for those in hospital, for the lonely, for the depressed. Comfort them with your presence, blessing all who minister to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Queen and the royal family while they grieve the loss of Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Upon our hearts is the ongoing negotiation for peace in Israel and Palestine. We wait for a ceasefire. Comfort the wounded and the grief-stricken. Be close to children and families in deep distress. We lift you the work of Eudekid as they are active in this fragile environment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. This day, we give you thanks because in fulfilment of your promises, you pour out your Spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, leading us into all truth and uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your gospel to all nations, and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore we join our voices with angels and archangels, and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells, to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you. loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms 
and bring us with Blessed Mary, Saint Peter and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of the Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Today we have remembered the coming of God's power on the disciples and we invite that same spirit to drive us out into the wild places of the world. May the spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the Eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. May the Spirit who set the Church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Sound. 